Hey everyone, Andy here, and uh, today I'm joined by Snail from Zeiss. Thanks for coming by. Oh, thanks for having me, Andy. I love having you by, and I love it even more when you bring new toys. Uh, <laughs> of um, course. Uh, this is the brand new Zeiss uh, Compact Prime 3. Yes. Uh, very excited to have the CP3 here. Um, if you don't know the Compact Prime history, uh, from the very beginning, uh, they came out sort of the, the, along with the digital revolution of cinema cameras, mm -hmm. the first RED cameras. Uh, they needed a lens that was a more affordable, and so Zeiss came along and made the Compact Prime, uh, a full cinema lens made to be more affordable and fit in the market uh, where, where it was needed. Mm -hmm. And then they evolved that into the CP2, which we yeah, have one here. Which we um, have one here. And that added uh, interchangeable mounts, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a big deal. Uh, we had a lot of uh, DSLRs out there and various cameras that had large sensors, and they needed a cinema lens, and so interchangeable mounts were added to this lens, and now we can do PL and EF and yeah. E, et cetera. And this, is a, and this line of lenses, the CP2s, have grown and an amazing lens set by itself. Mm -hmm. And then now we have the CP3, which is yes. another evolution of it. And you can see physically they're a little different. Um, so you can see that definitely there's a size difference. Right. Front diameter a little smaller, a little lower weight. 95 mil, 114. 114. Yeah. yeah, so you can see right there. Um, what else? The rings are different. Ah, that's nice. Very nice. Yeah. I mean, they were never bad, but this is really smooth. Yes, yes. Uh, They're dampened differently. Yeah. Um, closer in construction to ultra prime level quality. Wow. Yeah. And you're not going to have any problems like when the temperature gets colder, it's not going to get any harder or anything mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And they're super smooth. So uh, that's definitely an improvement. Yeah. There's also a mount already for lens support. Built that's in. integrated. And instead of being, you know, on, on CP2s, you can have the mount. Uh, kind of on the mount itself, right. the lens mount, you would have a little piece there. Right, yeah. But this makes more sense so you'd be further away from the body of the camera. That's nice for, to support it. For a variety of size cameras, it makes it really easy mm -hmm. to attach. Yeah. How, optically, have they changed a lot? What do you think? What do yes. you say? Yeah, I mean, yeah there's, there's some, some there's some new designs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like for the for example, the 18 is completely brand new. Yeah. But yes, we have uh, definitely optical uh, improvements due mainly through coatings, mm -hmm. um, the way the housing is built itself, mm -hmm. and then the coatings are sorry, the painting on the inside mm -hmm. that gives you even darker blacks. You higher know, contrast. Higher contrast. Yeah, that's great. So that means you have actually more contrast levels you can see. So these are really HDR ready. Oh, that's you know, great. lenses and if you're looking to do more HDR productions in the future for HDR display, it's good to have a lens that's very consistent. The lens is actually giving you that. Right? Yeah, giving you the it's high dynamic range really already. Really interesting. Yeah. Still uh, full format, full so it still format. covers uh, the same sensor sizes as before. So that's very important for mm -hmm. today, obviously, with the larger sensor yep. cameras coming out all the time. Consistent T-stops. So I know T T1 from 25, 25 all the way up, right? To 135. So below that, the 18, the 15, and the 21. Two nine. T29. Right. Two nine. Not, again, consistency. Very, pretty consistent. Yeah, pretty damn yeah, consistent. Pretty consistent. Yeah, so. Which is good for when you're lighting on set because you don't want to be just changing lights when right. you're going close ups and medium shots to idea. wide. You don't want to be very consistent. So that's the whole idea yeah. with this lens set in general is that we have consistency. We can switch the lenses fast. Yep. A little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, again, a great update. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, and Zeiss has always been pushing the boundaries, though, so they didn't stop there. I know you've added something <laughs> extra, which is yeah. uh, the XD version of this yes. lens as well. So tell me about the XD. There it is. Well, this there is, it is. Here's so there's the two XD. versions. This is the standard, and there's yeah. the XD. You notice this little pin. There's there. a little connector there, yeah, which yeah. you would see on uh, certain lenses. Um, and then there's also uh, an interface here yeah. on this PL mount. Yes for cameras that have LDS or cook eye information that goes through. So it's a smart lens that's feeding mm -hmm. data to the camera. We've seen Correct. this on higher end. I mean, the more expensive lenses they have right. this, you know, but now we have it here. Uh, I mean, it's a huge, a huge yep. add. Um, so I know right away, which is, you know, from other lenses that do this, you can pull lens, the lens data is very handy. You can see where you are. Right. Like Alexa Mini here on other cameras. Correct. You can, so you here, can, if I focus on this camera. You can see it on the screen. Alexa Mini will show you on the screen. Yeah. What It'll recognize the lens. Uh, yeah. You don't have to, like, program the lens rings in or anything like that. Yeah, if you have, like, a it's wireless focus plug. system, yeah. you know, like the one that you get for Airy, you can, it'll actually just know the lens and right. no mapping, it just works. There's no mapping, yeah. So that's, you know, again, something you'd only really find on the Master Prime or, right. or, or, or the like before. And because we're using the Cook Eye protocol, Call on these lenses. This is Cook Eye pins. Right? Yes. Okay, yeah. Well, this <coughs> means that the protocol, the information coming through, is based on the Cook Eye system, Got which it. is actually open source. Right. And yeah. that is supported by many manufacturers. So mm -hmm. almost every camera manufacturer on their PL mount lens has the ability to read Cook Eye data. Right. So let's and actually see it. That's Airy, Red, Sony, Sony Panasonic, Black Magic, Black Panasonic. Magic. Yeah, yeah, all of the above. Right. Yeah. So that's that's again universal. It's open. Mm -hmm. You're reading the lens data. 
And, and, and there's a lot in there, but I, I've, I heard that maybe there's a little bit more data than yes. we normally get on a, a standard lens. So in reality, you can see the same data coming from the PL interface sure. and this connector that's sure. out here. Yeah, yeah. But right now, because camera manufacturers are just hearing about this lens, yeah, yeah. they might not be supporting the extended data. So that's the, that's the XD guy. XD. Right? So that's, that's there's the, more <laughs> than just focus right. and iris. It would be nice to have focus and iris data, right. but, but we have we more. Have that. Yeah, we do more. <clears throat> and the more is that we do distortion and shading data mm. per focus you know, distance yeah. and per oh, iris. iris. So Every lens has some distortion and has some shading. Right. right. Uh, and normally we can go, they may have it on a chart or they may have different points of reference. Mm -hmm. uh, but you've actually sort of baked that information into the lens itself. You know, you've, you, you've, you've provided tables in the lens that basically Correct. tell us at any one point what the distortion and the shading parameters are, right? Right. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the rings on the mini. Yeah. And you're actually going to see on this screen, Here. you're going to see yeah. focus uh, when I do the focus, the distortion changes. And if I iris, there's going to be some changes in the shading data. Right. And if you look at the screen right over here, yeah. then I can here, I'll open this up and then I'll actually turn on and off the shading correction. So this is like the normal lens yeah. and this is with the shading correction. It kind of lightens the corners. And then distortion, you can see here is a distorted, normal distortion of the lens, and here is an undistorted straightened image. So you're, this this lens is sending a, a data over this master new box, master locket plus, is sending into live grade, right. and live grade is actually applying those changes live, so that you see right, like the what, what how the corrections that it could be right. that could be applied in post, right? Yeah. And, and we're using the master locket box plus right now, which is new. a new box. Right. Specifically, it is taking data from the lens and transmitting over Wi-Fi right so that we can mm. see. So when you're on set, yeah. if you wanted to, your DIT, as they're seeing the Let's grading, the card here, yeah, yeah, they're grading the footage that's coming in, yeah. you know, which we can do right now. Yeah. We could also see shading and distortion correction mm. because this is important when you're doing plates, right. like so backgrounds. So we don't, I mean, distortion and shading, these are normal things in lenses, and we might actually like them. They're of good course, things. yeah, they're characteristics they're the of the lens. Right, yeah. but for VFX, these are yes. things... They, they work we, against they you. They work <laughs> against you. We want to, we, <laughs> yes. we need this correction. So you, if you go to a rental house, and sometimes yeah. you go to the rental house, and you'll see these giant weird charts, Yeah. and basically those are to map out these distortions that you, uh, any lens will get. And, and so just imagine how much time that takes. It takes a lot it, of time. And in yeah. prep, you know, in, yeah. in, in basically pre-production before right. even on production, right. you know, you are sitting there guessing which lenses you're going to use for what shots, what iris they're going to be at, and, and then the focal You can't distances. map everything. You can't map you it can't, all. It, it yeah. takes a long time. Right. So you said it, end up getting a lot of data points and mapping out, yeah. you know, lots of different charts. <laughs> And so, then when you go on set, you're yeah. like, oh, but wait a minute, we closed down to a T56. <laughs> we never planned for, for this that. shot. We never planned for this. And then you don't necessarily have, have the kind exact of guess, data. And then move across. So, and so this, this way, the, it just takes it, the guesswork out of it. It does. And then you can apply that in post, create a, a nice clean VFX play, and then, right. and then sort of remove that later, I guess, if you wanted to. I mean, that's the whole point here is that it's just a, it's a correction that gives you that nice clean VFX require, requirement. Yes. But then, you know, it's something that you could actually apply and unapply. And I've heard that Resolve actually can to do, can actually yes. apply that data, right? So you can so capture at it. The, at, right now, yeah. what you can do is you can use the Master Locket Plus to get this extended data. So you get the data out of it. And okay. in the future, we want camera companies to be able to see this data as well. Yeah. And they'll be able to integrate it frame by frame in their video files. Got it. You yeah. know, like they do with iris and focus data. Sure. Yeah. So it's no different from that. Yeah. And then, in, in, forget about just live grade, but yeah. right now you can actually use SilverStack yeah. to yeah. save the frame by frame data That's and marry it up. Ah, okay, okay, if you don't have a camera that's smart like yeah, that, yeah. but if you do have a camera that's smart in the and future, gonna, and they're going to come. They're going to. It'll come. be very shortly. Yeah, yeah. And then what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to actually just use the plugin. Yeah. So in, in DaVinci Resolve, yeah, we actually have a plugin already. Yeah. That either you take the data from SilverStack and marry it together. Sure. Or you just have a camera that gives you the video file information with the you know shading and distortion data. Sure, yeah, that makes sense. And it actually will do it in real time for That's you. That's awesome. <laughs> so, so that I, means you can create you know your right. outputs for VFX or whatever pipeline right from, you need. Right, right from Resolve, right from already resolve. corrected. Already so. corrected. So, and yeah. that file that you use or the settings that you use for the distortion to yeah. or the shading, yeah. you can then reapply later. So once you comp your shot together, right. you can add everything back in. So you get so that look. Looks like, yeah. yeah, and you want the look. It's because the typical situation is everyone yeah. thinks, oh, VFX is such a big thing. But no, I mean, VFX 
VFX is really used ubiquitously it, today. It, not everywhere, yeah. I mean, even in a, like a, a lower budget television no, they, show, they, they it, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, set in New York, and yeah. I'm not really in New York. Right. You Maybe you take a close up of me against a brick wall. Yeah. But then you turn around and you take a close uh, a shot of, of Andy, yeah. and he's not on a brick wall, he's on a street, so we need a street, yeah. right? So what mm -hmm. you would typically do is mm -hmm. you would go and you would take three or four plates of that same street behind you yeah. so that in case the camera moved at all, right. we would have some room behind you sure, of course, to move yeah. around, right? But you can't have distortion. You can't have distortion. That, you yeah. can't have shading in the corners right. because then you can't, you you'll see the stitch. Right, so. so to be able to have the stitch really clean yeah. is to get rid of the distortion shading that out of your plates. Yeah. And also for Andy's shot, <laughs> we had to get rid of everything. Yeah. That way you can track everything really easily. Yeah. Put everything together, marry it together, and then at the end, add a distortion shading overall. Back about, back on to it, and then that way, if you go from your shot to my shot, OTS, OTS, it's going to look normal. And this is the work of VFX simplified. The you know I, what I like about this is that it's smart technology. You're adding mm -hmm. the smart technology in to make different workflows easier. Whether it's just whether it's a high-end VFX workflow that's that makes the whole thing go smoother, or it's an AC on set just being having be able to move faster right. because one, maybe his lens re read, is read by a, a, a hand unit, or mm -hmm. or just because he can flip the lenses quickly because of the same size. So you're basically right. refining this line this lineup. CP3 is just to me like size sort of continuing to pave the way. You know, they made the, the they, they've, they've been pushing the cinema market forever, and this is just yeah. another evolution of that. So yes. it's really exciting to see it. So uh, we're going to be at NAB next week. Yes. You have a booth. We have a booth. Correct. We're going to see you there. Yes. Um, so come on by. I know you have some footage that you shot. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, so we, we have not only some beauty shots and footage of just uh, the lenses in action, yeah. but we also are doing a proof of concept to show this you thing, yeah. how this whole thing puts together. You know, how do you put together the green screen and the front ground plates and yeah. the background plates? That's awesome. So yeah. exciting. Thank you so much for coming by. I appreciate it. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Thanks for having us. See you soon. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Take care.